Oh, hello. Hi. Come take a seat. My name is Holly, and I'll be your counsellor today. Have you ever seen a counsellor before? You have? Okay. Great. When was that? So a long time ago. Okay. No worries at all. Can I describe your name, please? Yep. And last name? Mm-hmm. Bring up the referral here. Um, oh, and your date of birth, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Won't be a moment. Just got that low there. Okay. So. So you have some concerns about some unhelpful um, thinking patterns, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure, lots of people have unhelpful thinking patterns and that's definitely something we can work on together. Would you like to tell me a little bit more about it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what kinds of unhelpful thinking are you experiencing? And how is that impacting you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And you think that's affecting so your relationships? Yep. And your job? Okay. Okay, so you're feeling a little bit stunted in life right now, like you're not really progressing anywhere. And then on top of that, you have all of these really unhelpful thinking patterns to go along with that. Okay. But just so I can get to know you a little bit better, I think today um, what we can do is complete, complete this little quiz together. And it's to figure out what sort of uh, thinking traps that you're falling into, okay? So that'll really help us flesh out these unhelpful thinking styles that you're, you're expressing. Yep, yeah. great. Let me just bring that up, okay? So, let me just... What that'll do is... I think it's got about 30-something questions in it. And it'll really help us just figure out what um, areas that you're struggling with the most so that in future sessions we can work on them together. Yeah. Um, before we begin, would you would you like something to drink? Whether that's a cup of tea or some water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can pour you a glass of water. That's fine. Let me just move my stuff out of the way. Um, I always keep some glasses around. Okay, this is for you. I'll just pop it next to you there. There you are. Okay, we have a sip of your water. Get nice and comfortable for me. I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. Okay. So, first question, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Number one, I see things as black or white, right or wrong, with nothing in between. And your options are agree, somewhat disagree, neutral, somewhat disagree, or disagree. So you have five options to choose from there, okay? Okay. So, what do you think? And, and try your best not to spend too much time thinking about these, okay? Really just try to go with your gut instinct with these. Just try to pump them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's really easy to get caught up in thinking about the answer. 
Alrighty, so, okay. Okay, so you somewhat agree? Sure. Number two, I focus on one incident to describe a whole situation or person. Somewhat agree? Okay. Number three, I see things as dramatically more or less important than they are. I see things as dramatically more or less important than they are. Agree? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to move my laptop forward a bit. Yeah. There we go, now I can see a bit better. <laughs> Number four, I overestimate the consequences of something negative happening. Agree? Mm hmm. I use should, need to, must, or ought to to motivate myself and feel guilty when I don't follow through. Agree? Okay. Number six, I attach a negative label to myself or others after a single event. For example, I didn't stand up to my boss. I'm such a wimp. Okay, so agree, sure. Question seven. I make assumptions about myself and others without any evidence. So somewhat agree. Okay. I minimize my accomplishments. Agree. Number nine. I blame others for my choices. Okay, so more neutral with that one. Okay, sure. Number 10, without considering their beliefs, I run other people's choices through my own belief system. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, I feel like we all I mean, we're all looking at things through our own lens, so, I mean, that one's a little bit of a silly one in my opinion, but anyway. Number 11, I assume my feelings are true without digging deeper to see if the feelings are accurate. Okay, okay, sure. So number 12, I allow one negative detail or fact to spoil my enjoyment, happiness, or hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some would agree, sure. Number 13, I treat my thoughts like facts. I treat my thoughts like facts. Agree, yep. I think lots of people fall into this thinking trap. Yep, I do, I see it all the time with my patients. 14, I focus on how unfair life is. I say, it's not fair, a lot. Do you feel like you say that a lot? Yeah, okay, no worries. Number 15, I believe external factors and things will make me happier in life. For example, if I had more money, if I had more this, then I'd be happy. Someone agree? Okay. 16, I fixate on another's behavior that fits my assumptions about an individual. Okay, so, all right, well, we can say neutral for that one. Yeah. 17, I assume people have negative motives more times than not. Agree, okay, yeah, sure. So let's keep going here to the next page. So. For number 18, it's easy for me to see the grey in life. I'm going to say that again. It's easy for me to see the grey in life. Okay, some might agree. 19, I rarely use words like always or never concerning a single experience or event. So, for example, she always does that. 
somewhat disagree. Okay. Alrighty. 20. I am a realistic and objective person who sees situations as they are instead of dramatizing them. Neutral. Okay. 21. I focus on what I want to see in my future, not what I do not want to see. Okay, so more neutral. Okay. 22. I live my life free from rigid rules for how my internal and external world should operate. I'm going to read that again because I feel like I said that wrong. I live my life free from rigid rules for how my internal and external world should operate. Neutral? Okay. 23. It's easy to forgive myself and not call myself names when I make a mistake or don't do as I would like. Okay, so you just look at the top and shoot. Number 24, I gather objective data about myself and others before making a judgment call. Okay, so you're more, mm -hmm. more neutral. Sure, that's fine. Are you doing okay over there? You're right to continue. I know there's quite a few questions here. It does take a little while. Okay, no worries at all. Okay, 25. I acknowledge the positives in my life, regardless of how small or big they are. So somewhat disagree, sure. I am mindful not to blame others or myself when I am not performing as I would like. So somewhat disagree, sure. 27. I respect other people's beliefs and choices and do not run what others do through my value or belief system. Somewhat disagree. Okay. Number 28. I challenge my feelings by looking for objective evidence before confirming them as true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe more neutral. Sure. 29. When I am met with the smallest negative detail or fact, I do not let it steal my enjoyment. Someone disagree. Okay, you're fast to answer with that one. <laughs> 30. I am careful when acting on a thought and I first make sure it's objectively true before responding. Somewhat agree? Okay, sure. 31. I realize life is not fair and I focus on what I can control. Some would agree. Okay. 32. I believe external things or experiences cannot make me internally happy. 33. I believe humans are complicated and one behavior trait cannot define a person. Okay. And the last one here, 34. When someone is kind to me, I am not suspicious of them, but gladly accept the compliment. Mm. Okay. So somewhat disagree. Sure. Let's submit that and get our answers. Oh, you did great, by the way. Okay. Let's get our results here. Let me just get them up and download them. Just be a moment, all right? Thanks for your patience. So your assessment results. Okay. So the more you struggle with a particular thinking trap, um, the higher your score will be. Okay. And we will go through all of these. There's quite a few categories, so bear with me. Um, and we can. Um, we can explain them a little bit as well. Just have a quick look at what your higher scores were. So they're all out of 10 each category. 
and your highest one seems to be 8.5. Okay, and what's your lowest score? 5.5. Okay, so all of your answers were in the range of 5.5 to 8.5 out of 10. Okay? okay, and so what we'll do is focus um, in future sessions, we can focus more on the um, results that scored higher. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's go over these. First one, the category was all or nothing thinking and what that really means is seeing things as black or white um you know right or wrong there's just nothing in between for you there's no gray areas and they provide an example here that says i didn't finish writing that paper so it was a complete waste of time if i'm not 100 percent in shape there's no point in playing they didn't show they're entirely unreliable and your result for that was 5.5 out of 10. So definitely leaning more towards that, that being problematic for you, but maybe in the realm of manageable, like you are able to sort of stop yourself and be like, mm, maybe I can um, address that negative thinking. And those are ones we can still work on as well. Um, and that, that'll be even easier for you to work on than the ones you score higher with. Yeah, and the first step is really just to know what they are and to be aware of them. And it's really interesting because because we all we all do it, right? Like we all do. It's just really nice to know. Um, you can't improve on things that you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so next one was overgeneralization. So really, just focusing on. Um, you know, like only one incident and it describes a whole situation or a whole person and you usually use words like always and never with a single event or experience. So they provide an example here. I'll never get that promotion. She always does that. You focus on your partner's failure to ask about your day and ignore all the other caring things he or she does. And your score for this one was 7.5, so a little bit higher um, than the all or nothing thinking. Okay, so your next one was the minimizing or magnifying. Um, and it's really just seeing things in a really dramatically, um, seeing things in a way that's either way more dramatic or way less dramatic than they should be. And it's often creating a catastrophe that follows. So, for example, because my boss publicly thanked her, she'll get that promotion, not me, even though I had a great performance review and just won an industry award. And another one, oh, I forgot that email. That means my boss won't trust me ever again. I won't get that raise and my wife will leave me. So do you see the problem there? Like that whole like one little thing um you can see it as a way 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 bigger deal than it is like one little mistake you can see as the end of the world and your life will fall apart and nothing's ever going to be good for you again and you can see how that can create a lot of difficulties in your life yeah okay so um so you got a 7.5 out of that one so quite high i would say yeah uh, catastrophizing so um, that's really just overestimating the consequences of something negative happening so for example you imagine a bad review will get you fired um, and another example is you have to talk with your boss about a raise and you imagine it going terrible even though she's pretty approachable they're sort of thinking about those worst case scenarios, even if it may not really be warranted. Yeah, okay. So, the next, oh, and you got a 5.5 out of 10 for that one. Yeah. Next one 
was um, should statements. And these are just some rigid rules for how your inner and external world needs to operate. So you leave little in between room um, using should, need to, I must, I ought to, in um, like in order to motivate yourself. And then uh, you feel tend to feel really guilty when you don't follow through on those things that you feel like you have to do, need to do, must do. Um, or you may even experience anger and resentment when someone else doesn't follow through on things that you think they should be doing. And you um, need to get a 7.5 out of 10 for that one. So you can definitely, yeah, yeah, you can relate to that one. Sure. Okay. Next one is labeling or mislabeling, and it's just attaching a negative label to yourself or others following a single event. So, for example, I didn't stand up to my co worker, I'm such a wimp, or what an idiot, he couldn't even see that coming. I find lots of my patients do that to themselves. Um, like, yeah, making a little mistake and being really, really hard on themselves, and they're um, their thinking styles could say things like, I'm an idiot, I'm a failure, I'm a mistake, what's the point? And that's a perfect example of that labeling or mislabeling. Yeah. Oh, and you got an 8.5 out of 10 for that one. So this is one this is one of the highest scores that you've got here. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously those sorts of negative thoughts if you if you keep saying in your head all of these terrible things about yourself you know how do you think that might make you feel yeah yeah pretty bad right yeah that's it. it it very well can make you miserable telling yourself that that you're a failure or you're an idiot every single day like how how are you going to live a fulfilling and satisfying life assuming that everything you do you'll fail yeah yeah no i i understand we can we can work on that don't worry um are you okay we move on to the next one so the next one was jumping to conclusions okay and this is really just making assumptions about yourself or perhaps others without any real um real evidence to to back that up so for example, um, your partner is abnormally quiet when meeting your parents. So you assume that they don't like them, even though that might not be the case at all. It's just jumping to conclusions. Yeah. Um, another example of this is mind reading, um, still within this ca category. And it's making negative assumptions about how people see you without evidence or factual support. So you assume you know what someone is thinking without the evidence to, to support that hypothesis. Yeah, and you got a 6.5 out of that um, category. Okay, so. How are you doing so far? Are you doing okay? Okay, I'm just checking. How are we going time-wise? Okay, we've still got a little bit of time with this session. Are you okay that we're spending our time doing this quiz today? Yeah, okay. I just thought it'd be a really good way to get this overall picture of you and we can, um, in future sessions, maybe work on doing some cognitive behavioral therapy together. Yeah, absolutely. And really working on those thoughts, those thought patterns. Yeah. So the next category was discounting the positive. Um, you did get an 8.5 out of 10 for this one, so another really high one here. And it's not acknowledging the positives, and it's saying anyone could have done it, or insisting that your positive actions, qualities, or achievements you know, don't really count, you know. Um, so for example, I've only cut back from smoking 40 cigarettes a day to 10. It doesn't count because I haven't given up entirely yet. So really just not giving yourself credit where credit is due. And I do see that a lot. When people are 
you know, and these categories can be combined at the same time. So, um, you know, for example, with jumping to conclusions and just making these negative predictions, um, or even thinking that you're a failure, and then you also can be discounting the positive at the same time and thinking, oh, well, that doesn't that doesn't really matter. Oh, it's not as good as this person, and just not being able to accept um, your achievements. And you know, what do you think might happen if you can't accept your achievements along the way? Yeah. Yeah, it could, it could make you just give up and not see the point in continuing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the next category is blame. And you got a 6.5 out of 10 for this one. Um, I feel like it's quite self-explanatory here. But it's blaming yourself when you aren't entirely responsible. Um, or blaming other people and denying your role in the situation. So I feel like that's quite self-explanatory there. Yeah, okay. So next one, personalization. And it's overestimating the influence on adverse events, taking things personally, and running other people's choices and decisions through your own belief system without considering their beliefs. I know that was a bit of a mouthful, bear with me. So an example here is you get frustrated with how someone chose to do something or you assume your partner doesn't care about you when they fail to keep their word and you got a 7.5 out of 10 for that one so quite high so the next one is emotional reasoning and it's really you know using your emotions by assuming that all of your feelings are true I feel therefore I am so without really digging deeper to see if the thought or sensations are accurate yeah exactly so your perspective and your decisions are really just solely based on your emotional reactions and yeah so instead of logical reasoning it's emotional reasoning yeah exactly so, for example, I feel like an idiot, so therefore it must be true. I feel guilty, so I must have done something wrong. Or I feel awful for yelling at my partner. I must be selfish and inconsiderate. So just because you feel a certain way, it doesn't mean that it's true or objective. Yeah. Yeah, and you got a 7.5 out of 10 for that one. So, next one, how many more are left here? Just a few more, okay. Um, okay. Just. Okay, the next one was mental filter. And it's allowing one negative detail or fact to spoil your enjoyment, happiness, hope, fun, or joyous time. So, for example, you have a great evening and dinner at a restaurant with friends, but your chicken was undercooked, which spoiled the whole evening. Or your spouse interrupted you and now you're in a bad mood, allowing it to ruin the whole evening's fun. So do you let little things spoil the whole event for you? Yep, and you got a 7.5 out of 10 for that one, so I think that's... That's definitely been the case for you, yeah, yeah. So, the next one here is thoughts are what they say they are. So, treating thoughts like facts. Potential subjective information becomes fact. Example, you think your wife is mad at you, therefore it's true. You believe you will fail, so therefore it's true. I feel like that one is very similar to the emotional reasoning that whole just because you think it it must therefore be a fact which isn't the case um and you had a 6.5 out of 10 for that one next category it's not fair so it's when you hyper focus on whether things are fair or not so for example it's not fair that she got the job I wanted 
or it's not fair that I have to do summer school and she doesn't. And you got a 6.5 out of 10. I do see that one a lot more frequently in, um, in some of my younger patients. Uh, you know, you hear it from kids a lot, like, that's not fair. They got this and I didn't. It's that whole sort of concept. And sometimes it can be really hard to shake that, even going into adulthood. Yeah. So, next one is If Only. And it's when you are hyper focusing on an imagined outcome as the solution to your problems and believing an external reality will solve your problems and bring happiness. So, if only I had more money, if only I got a promotion. Um, another one, and you got six out, 6.5 out of 10 for that one. The next one is tunnel vision. So, um, it's fixating on another's behavior that fits your assumptions or judgments about the individual. So, for example, you believe your boyfriend is selfish and you only focus on that. Um, okay, and you got 5.5 out of 10 for that one. And the last one here, okay, almost done, is biased explanation. So, that's believing another person has negative motives without any evidence. So, for example, your mum is only being nice just because you want something. And you got an 8.5 out of 10 for that one, so that biased explanation, that's that's also another one of your highest scores there. Yeah. So that's that's the whole list there. I know it's a lot. Um would you like a copy of this by the way? I can um I can save it and email it to you if you like. Yeah? Okay, great. Let me do that for you. Okay. How are you feeling about your results there? Was it what you expected? Um, was some of them a little bit surprising to you? Okay. So some... Okay. So some were quite obvious to you and others you hadn't even... You hadn't even realised was a negative thinking style. Yeah, okay. That's quite normal. And as I said, we could definitely work on those in future sessions together. If you would like to carry on future sessions with me, I can't make anyone come back and see me. It's um, it's totally up to you, okay? This is a collaborative process. Okay, so I'll just set the prompts for you. Could you just tell me your email, please? Mm -hmm. Yep. Gmail, yeah, great, okay. Subject, sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's off. Yeah, So you have a copy of that. Um, okay, I'm also going to write down these results. Just for my own records. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So we have the okay. Next one you got let's see. Sorry, I just might be a moment and then um and then I'll let you go, okay. Oh, you've got somewhere to be? Oh that's fine. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Well if you'd like to make another appointment, you can go see our receptionist. Um, you know, just out the front, okay, and you can make another appointment. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not gonna keep you if you've got somewhere to be. Yeah, I'll 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 write these up and put them on my record in my own time.
Yep. And that's fine. Okay. See you later. Nice meeting you.